Hey guys, Jeff here, uh, Home Renovation. Listen, one of the most common questions I've gotten from my viewers and members alike is how to install a ledger board onto your house. I keep getting pictures from people who had some idiot take a ledger board and just attach it to the house over top of the siding. That's just pure lazy and it's also stupid. It causes lots of water damage down the road. So I'm going to show you the proper way to do it. Now, you know I'm renovating my old house and so Two years ago, and I attached this ledger board to reattach the deck to the wall because it was failing. I'm going to take a look at what's going on here as far as the condition of it. Uh, hopefully, my system is a good one and we don't see any advanced rot. Well, would you look at that? It's dry and brand new as the day was installed. Okay. Now, here's the system. If you're installing a new ledger board to a house, what you do is you go back to the original part of the house, clean it up. And if it's all siding, that means taking a grinder, cutting out the area that the ledger board is going to be going. Keep in mind the, the sizes and adjustments that you're gonna to need to reinstate all of your siding. Now, if you're going over brick, you're fine, but that's the only structure that you can attach this stuff to that you don't have to remove first because brick is tied to the house. It's already a structural component and you're gonna be pre-drilling holes in the brick to get all the way into the rim joists, okay? So it really doesn't make a difference. This stuff here, if you drill through your siding, A, you've got a compression issue because the siding is a material that takes up an inch and a quarter. And when you start compressing it, it goes out of shape. You risk siding coming apart but more importantly, you aren't going to get the ledger board and the hardware attached tight enough to actually transfer the load properly. And you're going to allow for water to get infiltrated in behind it and start rotting the hole around those lag bolts. And as soon as that starts happening and you got wet wood, then you got critters move in. And critters make a quick work of wet wood and make a home there. All that saying, there are a lot of people sending pictures of decks that were installed 20 years ago improperly. And no, no, it's 20 or 30 years ago. But the point is, is a deck that is installed right should last at least 50. Make sure that you do it right. Don't let water get in behind by taking your house wrap after you put on your ledger board, okay? Install it. Take your house wrap and then tape it up again. This house wrap will divert the water even on a flat surface and it will protect your investment. <laughs> if you can install it better than I do, I hope. <laughs> also, if you have any tears or rips, fix that while you're at it. The whole idea of this material, whether it's Tyvek or Typar or whatever brand name is selling it and put the stamp on it, it doesn't matter. This material breathes. It's vapor resistant, but it is an air barrier. There's a big difference between moisture in the form of gas being able to pass through this and wind being able to pass through this. So it blocks almost all the wind of the house which is key. It also is a water barrier. So when moisture is in the liquid form, it will actually just continue to rain right on down, pass over your ledger, down past your galvanized hardware, and everything will stay dry. Now when you're done, you can take this, minus the cobwebs. This is what we call drip edge. I actually bought this at the Home Depot. It comes preformed. So a wonderful little piece of metal. And in this situation, what it does, it installs right here like this. I'm gonna put it actually behind my flange there. There we go, okay? Now remember, we're talking about a water diversion system here, not a waterproofing system, okay? There are technologies out there that you can waterproof the exterior of your house. This is not one of them. This technology simply allows and diverts water down the wall surface and over all of your structure so that your structure stays dry. That is the number one key component to any house keeping your structure dry. And until you've satisfied that requirement, there's no sense investing money renovating because it's all gonna get eaten by the bugs anyway. And like most home renovators, we just use staples to attach our house wrap. And it works better if there's some in the gun. There we go. Now, if you're gonna leave this unattended for any length of time, make sure you use the nails. That's right, there is a plastic cap nail designed specifically for house wrap. You know, and if you're new to renovation and you're not familiar with all your fasteners, you can click the link up here. We did a video explaining a lot of the basic fasteners that you're gonna be using. It'll be really beneficial. Check that out. 
Now I know what you're thinking when you're looking at the drip edge here. You go, oh Jeff, you're going a little too far this time. Maybe I'm going a little overboard. But you know what? 90% of the damage that caused to the house is around ledger boards and rim joists. So putting an extra layer of protection on there just makes common sense. So now we're going to just go through the process for finishing this off. You're going to want to use a piece of J-trim. And remember, you want to install the siding first before your floorboards. The idea is this. The siding is a 100-year product. Okay? Once you install that right, you never have to worry about it. But if you install the siding first, then it's continuous right down. The, then your floorboards can actually come up next to it. Now. So once you've got your drip edge on, you want to install your J-trim for your siding. And the reason you want to use J-trim here is because in a lot of cases when you cut into your siding, you're left with a piece that doesn't have anything to lock onto. The potential that that is a perfect brand new piece that you could remove and add a starting strip is very, very low. So don't plan on that. Just plan on using the J-trim. These J-trim pieces have little holes in them for weeping. And you can see there's no positive contact here. Because the drip edge is on an angle, when you install this, there's enough room there for water to gather and be released. And listen guys, if your J-trim doesn't already have drip holes in it, just grab a screw. All right, run a few drip holes in there for you. It doesn't take much, nice and low. This is gonna be covered up by the decking. But if you don't do that, all the water is gonna run just to the corners. That's usually the weakest spot in the wall. I'll take the grinder any day of the week, Max. So now we, we, we have, let's just recap. We've got our ledger board attached to the building with nothing in behind it. We've got our tie par or tie vec wrapped around it. We've got that joint sealed if you have a joint. Then you attach all your hard or fasteners like your, your joist hangers. Make sure you use the structural screws or nails. Okay, then you've got your drip edge. Then you've got your J trim. Then you've got your siding. Then you've got your cedar or whatever other material you're using. Now it is nice to be able to finish your wood, not tight up against this edge, but just tight up against, when you look down, you see the drip edge. So there's your gap. Water that goes in between here will actually empty out underneath. Watch this, because nothing is really attached there. It's nice to maintain that gap. This is something that you want to maintain with your pressure washer as well. Give it a quick blow a couple of times a year to keep all the dirt and debris and leaves and that sort of stuff piling up in there. Oh, I'm bleeding. I need some electrical tape. Do -do -do. There we go. Good as new. Remember, it only takes a few minutes to make that adjustment to your building when you're going to put a ledger board on. Don't cut corners and make it a 20-year deck because now you've got rot and water and insect infestation. Do yourself a favor. Spend the 20 bucks on materials. Take the half an hour to cut it out and reinstate it, and you'll be a lot happier. Thanks for joining us today. Don't forget to give us a like if this is going to save your bacon. All right? And check out this video over here. It's all of our siding how-to. So you as a DIYer can take off the old siding and put on a brand new one while you're putting in a new deck. Heck, why not? It's a great way to get a huge return on investment and increase the value of your home. And you can do it yourself.